the Leo and Danny show. Well, one thing I learned from watching, uh, I think Godfrey was the one who taught me this. I don't know if you know Godfrey, the comic. He's Gilbert also, Godfrey? Not Gilbert Godfrey. Godfrey, Black Godfrey from okay. Nigeria. But he's, I watched him do, I did a charity show with him at the Laugh Factory. And it was one of these, like everyone there was so PC and half of them were lesbians. And everything about it was like protecting a woman's right to whatever. I don't know. And that not, made its way into their material. That's what they were talking about. On so stage. the whole thing, I think it was like a Planned Parenthood charity or something like that. Jesus. But it was the most serious charity. It was like That's a bummer. It was like babies with cancer, some sort yeah. of charity with that. And then you have to go do jokes like, hey, yeah. here's a dick joke. And everyone was bombing. And I was like, oh, this is just a lost cause. You yeah. can't. Everyone's going to bomb. Mm -hmm. I go up there and I was I felt like I was pretty good at that point And I bombed. Mm hmm. And Godfrey went up there and he was just like, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about you people. You don't like me. <laughs> and he ended up murdering. Jesus. At that point, I realized like you can always, it doesn't matter what the crowd is. There's always a key. There's always a key to find a way into the crowd and make them laugh. You yeah. know, what was Godfrey doing? Was he addressing the situation, making jokes about down yeah. babies and Planned Parenthood? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he was just addressing like how weird it is. And he kind of went into this whole idea about how he didn't really give a shit because I think uh, the death of really good comedy is people who are really worried what the people are going to think. Yeah. So if you go into this crowd like, oh, they're not going to like me, you're already setting yourself up for disaster. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. why Bill Burr is, you know, so yeah. successful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he is at the point now where he does not give a shit at all what people shit. think. Yeah. I just yeah. read a Jeff Ross book and it was fantastic, by the way. I expect it to be just a hastily written piece of shit that a comedian writes to make a quick uh, publishing advance, but it was really fucking good. Jeff Ross's philosophy, his philosophy on roasting, hmm. his first couple years in LA, and he told a story. This is going to be uh, a real anticlimax because I don't remember the details. But basically, <laughs> he got called on to come roast at a guy's funeral, oh and he God. just immediately started making jokes about how the guy died and the guy's loser family. Oh my and God! He killed. He said he just <laughs> turned in like you're supposed to get out of a skid yeah. by turning into the skid. Yeah. He did that with comedy, and he completely won the crowd. Wow! Whereas if you go up there and you just go into generic material that's one size fits all, you could tell it at any sort of event mm -hmm. it's not going to be received as well i guess or this, that's what i'm gathering from what you said yeah right? exactly i was just having this conversation with someone recently about doing urban rooms and like black rooms because i used to be very afraid of doing black rooms and by the way i'm still like get a little bit trepidant about it but <laughs> but you gotta <laughs> lean in you gotta like gotta lean, lean into in, it yeah. if you have a joke that is mm, should i say this joke say it but if you say it you gotta fucking say it with your whole fucking heart and yep. balls and yeah. taint you gotta go up yeah. there and go you know i used to do a joke about um dating a black girl and how my dad disapproved because um, he said it was against the Bible, which is all true. <laughs> and then I go, first of all, Jesus was black. And they were like, hell yeah, Jesus was black. I go, he had to be. First of all, he ran with a posse. That gets a little bit of a laugh. <laughs> I go, a, pos a posse short for apostle, a little bit of a laugh. And then I said something else. I said, if he did any work at all, it was a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're liking me. And I say that joke. And there's like a little bit Austin of, ooh, there's a little bit of like, ooh, like, uh, yeah. but then I look at him and I go, like we're, we're in a comedy show. Yeah. You've been laughing motherfuckers. Yeah. So you laugh at that too. Cause yeah, I'm about to right. talk about how your dicks are big in a minute. So yeah. deal with it. <laughs> yeah. That's so I've never seen you even close to bomb. I'm sure you've bombed. I mean, what do you have like a terrible bombing story? Because I've never even seen you bomb. Oh, the word. <laughs> The worst I probably ever bomb, at least recent in recent years, because uh -huh. you get to a point in comedy where you're like, I'm not going to bomb again, bro. Right, exactly. Yeah. And usually when you headline, you're not going to bomb because there's at least mm -hmm. half the crowds there say you. Yeah. But I did a show in New York called Sweet. This guy Seth Herzog has this. It's an alt show. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not necessarily an alt comic, but I can do alt rooms and do pretty well. Now what is alt comedy? Because like a lot of my favorite comedians, Artie Lang, Nick DiPaolo, these very men's men type comics from New York. They talk very scornfully about alt comedy. Is that just more of the, the turtleneck, purple hair, lesbian style scene? Like making jokes about nerdy topics? What is alt comedy? I mean, that's close to what it is. It's really, a, it's comedy that is considered to not play to the lowest common denominators. Like you're not gonna, if it's sexist, you can't really be sexist or misogynistic. It, it can't be racist. So everything has to have some sort of undercurrent of responsibility for people's feelings. Yes. That may be, that sound like a weird way of saying it. But the result of that is because you're responsible for people's emotional lives in the show, you do stuff that's a little more abstract and weird. Like you'll talk about unicorns and robots and fucking weird shit that can't offend anyone because it's sort of abstract and... Yeah, I, I feel like so often alt 
or surreal or just uh, label slapped over stuff that should be labeled not funny. <laughs> just if you're not getting laughs, if your TV show, nobody fucking understands it or laughs at it, just it's because it's postmodern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hate that, but I want to hear your Bobby well, story. Well, if you want to hear the, one of the best sort of dissertations about all comedy, Bill Burr does a rant about it. Just really? like Bill Burr, all comedy. Mm -hmm. And it was on his podcast because Bill Burr has always been embraced by clubs and the all comedy scene. And his big thing is like, I'm so sick of these fucking alt comics who they can't go on the show early enough. Mm -hmm. Like, God forbid you have to follow a club comic mm -hmm. who's like used to murdering. You're like, I got to go first. I got to go. I got to get out. I got to go first because it's an easier job if you're like second or third as opposed to like the closer of a show mm -hmm. and you're up there reading a memo and you're all nerdy and fat with glasses and a man bun. So uh, mm -hmm. no offense to man buns, Leo. You, you know, <laughs> and no offense to nerdy and fat guys, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> fucking loser. So, <laughs> so he basically was like, he was like the people who really were the, the godfathers of the alt scene where people who came out in like the Southern circuit, the most vicious, like the circuit where you get your ass kicked. You know what I mean? These were fucking Mark Marin, right? Patton Oswald, I, which David I, Cross. Two of my least favorite comedians, by the way, Mark Marin and Patton Oswald. <laughs> and David Cross, I've heard is a piece of shit too. Oh really? I, I didn't like Mr. Show much. That's the only thing I've seen. Yeah, but uh, I'm sorry. So I'm, anyway, that's but those it, those are the but they came up doing a, doing clubs in a mm. very tough tough market, mm. and they became sort of like the forefathers of the alt scene, and then the people who benefited from that like just ended up performing for people who were already like indoctrinated into their <laughs> ideology, so they had not, they had to fight anything. Like if you ever right. go to an alt room and someone goes up there like, uh, you know, I've been thinking about killing myself because. Uh, I'm fat and I have a small dick. Like <laughs> that gets you know? laughs. Oh, it gets because because you're the victim. Yeah, gotcha. You know, if yeah. you go up there like oh, I got a big dick, I'm, you know, and like you know, like <laughs> swagger. Like Leo would get booed uh, off stage get booed before off stage he said a word, sure. just for looking yeah. the way he does. Yeah. I think both of you would have a tough time alt scenes, but yeah. it doesn't mean you couldn't do an alt scene. But you just have to be as vulnerable as possible so they don't feel threatened. Right. Honestly, so the, what happened to me is I did Sweet, which is an alt show, and by the way. There's some alt comics who I think are brilliant and they blow me out of the fucking water. There are a lot of guys. I mean, even like Drew Mike, Michael, who's kind of an alt comic, like I don't want to like the guy, but he's pretty fucking brilliant, you That's know, good, yeah. and he can kill in any room. So I was up there. It was three days after the Harvey Weinstein thing. Oh, broke. Bad time. And it's East Village, New York, you know, a lot yeah. of women and yeah. they're all like from Brooklyn and mm -hmm. hmm. And I was like, well, I got to address the pink elephant in the room. So I, I started kind of just riffing about like how he jerked off into a plant. Mm. Mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, the story about how he like jerked off to a plant. Like, what about that plant? <laughs> <laughs> the poor plant's just sitting there. I don't know. Just something like. And I, funny and to me. It's just like. It is funny. It's funny. So there's a, there's a comic named Jenna yeah. Friedman uh -huh. who used to write for The Daily Show. And she's doing well on her own. She's on the show. I'm hosting the show. She starts heckling me. Holy I'm shit. heckled by a comic on my show. She's like, shut up. What the fuck? I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, that's fucking Jenna Friedman. She's fucking. What? Um, and, uh, and then someone was like, oh, and then I had a friend there. I brought my friend for like a sidekick. So funny. And my friend was like, he was like, yeah, we're going to go back and forth like fucking Paul Schaefer and Johnny Carson, da, 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 whatever. And as I was going, he was just like slowly like retreating. Oh, shit. Like he wouldn't say shit. So I'm looking over him for help. He's just like, oh, my God. Because he's like an actor on the blacklist. He's like, I'm not going to be associated with this yeah. shit at all. Yeah. And there was something about it where I just stood there in this fucking silence where I was like, this is kind of cool. Yeah. That's a weird feeling where you the tickle and your taint. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. ugh. Yeah. And I was, and someone's like, I'm just going to watch you fucking bury yourself. I'm like, this is a free show in the East village. Yeah. I'm not fucking burying myself. You dumb cunt. Yeah. There you know we what go. I mean? Yeah. And, uh, which obviously didn't help my cause. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But Jenna Freeman came up after heckling me the whole time. And then she comes up for five minutes. starts like ripping on me. Mm -hmm. And then she has a fine set. So I come you back. You don't have on. to keep complimenting her. You keep no, but she, hedging she, your bets she, here. You said she's doing well on her own. She had a fine. She's a <laughs> cunt. She's a By cunt. the way, her, her her comedy CD is called American Cunt. Oh, so God damn it! God. But I she's co-opted that term. I follow. I go, she's a stage, fat whore. I go up on stage. I go up on stage. I'm like, I'm like, Jenna, get back here, have a seat. Nice. And I said, What would you heckle me if I'm the host of the show? And she actually, to her credit, she kind of apologized because that is 
There's no circumstance. I don't no. give a fuck what you think about the comic is doing on stage. Yeah. We heckle another fucking comic here on the same show. Any comic, Never. even if you're not on the show. Yeah. It's so. I was like, heck, you know, you didn't have to do that, Jenna. It was kind of. And she was like, Yeah, I know. Because she had a good set, she was fine. She could then right. talk about it. Of course. But um, that so that's alt comedy in a nutshell. First of all, I Damn. love the bit you got heckled for. That's fucking awesome. For that's just hilarious. Terrific. I can understand. Like, I'm seeing the plant <laughs> behind a desk in a courtroom <laughs> testifying against Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> and the weapor the reparations it wins is like yeah. a fine window with a yeah. nice sun drenched yeah. place. They start pouring in a little blue label yeah. instead of water. Blue label, right? <laughs> Get a little bit of liquor. <laughs> You gotta fucking uh, make that plant feel better. Yeah, it's, it's been traumatized. And maybe like no. three weeks after, but three days after was definitely like people were like, you could just tell the audience was like, don't you fuck, you're a white man and you've probably assaulted women. You better not say shit. Yeah. There's just that feeling. And I made the wrong choice. I mean, really, it's about when you bomb, it's about not if you're good or bad it's like what choices did you make sometimes you yeah. just go down the wrong path and I was right. like I should have just made it as goofy as possible the goofiest yeah. non-sexual non-relationship yeah. thing ever yeah. you know I want to talk about how hard stand-up is yeah. and how you can't fake it and how it seems to me that the only remedy for shitty stand-up comedy is just a decade two decades of practice. Mm -hmm. I was noticing this recently. I noticed it, first of all, right away when I hopped up on stage in New York. I did a lot better at the LA show, but yeah. I was shit-faced. I was nervous for the New York set. He's tired. There's, there's something, yeah. even if your material is strong, which I'm not saying mine is, but I'm saying, say a guy's a great joke writer. He writes for television. He writes for other people. A guy I'm thinking of right now is, uh, I think, Robert Smigel. Do you know him? He oh, works yeah. He's he around SNL sketches. Yeah. Uh, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. Yeah. I've been watching those bits lately. They're ingenious. They're very helpful to me as a comedy writer, as a YouTube video writer. But he did stand-up on the roast of Alec Baldwin, and he bombed. It, his jokes were not landing. He had Jeff Ross with a physical snare drum and cymbal to do <laughs> his jokes, which was a saver. It made the shitty joke seem more funny. But I realized like this guy has all the comedic talent in the world, but he clearly doesn't have enough stage and mic time for it to translate into stand up comedy. Do you agree with that? What, Robert Smigel? Do you, know, just, do you agree with the, the idea that there is no substitute for just getting on stage and doing uh, stand-up to yeah. be good at stand-up? I mean, stand I mean Danny, you know, I'll say this to you. About, you're obviously a super smart guy, super charismatic. If you wanted to be a great stand-up, it's, it's right there. It's at your disposal. It is. I you agree. Know. I agree. So and I it think it would, means, it would help our cause too, because he could fucking fill up little arenas. Yeah, all over. I would keep we could, doing. We it. could have, we could have Bill Dawes come out on the road with us, man. It'd be, be a great tight. fucking. I time. would like that Bill Dawes. I mean, in the fucking I, I, I would, I would, pussy, you dude. Know, let's and go. It, and look, 